Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you are. And welcome back to the Beta Plan, playing Planescape Torment. And the last time, I promised that we would get some new companions, and one would be inside of this building. And this building, namely named the Brothel of Slating Intellectual Lusts. Oh, we're probably gonna fight a lot of nerds there, right? Governors and what have you not, of the fraternity of order, all for rules and what have you not. I'm gone. I'm gone. Wait, when? Before you is a stunning golden-haired woman, dressed in azure and violet dress, with two long, elegant wings draped across her shoulders. She is surveying the room with a slight smile. She's easily the most beautiful woman you have ever seen. <laughs> Greetings. Well met, Traveler. How may I help you? The woman turns to you as you address her. She takes your measure and nods slightly. You notice her eyes are azure, the exact same color as her dress. She reaches up to brush back a stray lock of golden hair. Who are you? Updated my journal. I am called Fall from Grace. She studies me for a moment. You are new to Sigo, are you not? Yes, I am. Does it show? She smiles slightly. Not as much as you might think. You carry yourself quite well. And what is this place? This is the brothel of slating intellectual lusts. She studies you for a moment. I take it by your question that you did not intend to partake of this establishment? Brothel of slating intellectual lusts? What kind of a brothel is this? I established this brothel to give those lustful fevers that strike the mind more avenues of expression rather than sin simply carnal. Much pleasure can be had in conversation and engaging in the verbal arts with others. Well, that's interesting knowing what you are, but I think we can uh, ask it in a moment. Besides, probably most men will go, sounds dull, like Mord does, but, well, Mord is rather two-dimensional. Not really, but he does miss a good part of his 3D. I assure you, it is not. Throw the brothel, see for yourself. So, there's a brothel where there's no intercourse. Only a physiological nature. Rest assured, it's still quite stimulating. I have to ask, why did you establish such a place? Fall from Grace raises an eyebrow. That is an odd question, she frowns. I don't think anyone has ever asked me that, at least directly. So, why did you? Part of the answer to your question requires that you know that I am a member of the Society of Sensation. Our factions believe that one should experience as much of the multiverse as possible. Um, that is why you established this place? This brothel is intended to slate the lusts of even the hard intellectual. It is designed to stimulate the mind, to heighten one's awareness of themselves and others, to create new ways of experiencing another person. It is for those who seek something more than the shallow physical f pleasures that fill the hive in the lower wards. I see, so this establishment's just a curious intellectual fencing rather than a... Well, the other kind of fencing. The woman here must be special indeed. The women here are aspiring sensates. They have come to me in search of instruction, to prepare themselves to enter the faction. Also, many of them have a natural grasp of language that can shatter the crust of the most hardened individual. I see, so the ladies here are... Ladies in training, so to speak? Yes, I hope that by learning the art of language and its subtleties, that the patrons and the students here may learn more about themselves. One is only as limited as their command of the language. To be able to employ a language to evoke emotion in others is a tremendous skill. Uh, we saw that in the last episode with Namel. Ooh. Can I ask another question, though? Uh, <clears throat> he was a kind of wondering. Those wings are on back. What are you? Not that I already didn't know, but still, hey, for my watches. She's one of the fiends. One of the sucky beasts she is. She'll take your measure, then she'll take your soul to the lower plane, so she will. Your companion is correct. I'm Alyssa Tonari. More specifically, the succubus. 
She gives the sort sign. I'm afraid we're a little too common in the lower plains, and elsewhere for our own good. Most of my race spend their time seducing mortals with various pleasures of the flesh. And, uh... You... Updated my journal. I'd like to think that I have distanced myself from them. It is ultimately a trivial and non-productive way for one to spend one's time in the multiverse. There's much more to live, wouldn't you agree? Um, except that you are eternal, seeing you are a demon. No, well, more or less eternal, unless you die in your own plane, but in principle, otherwise a demon is immortal. At least in the D&D planescape cosmology. Um, so... Came here looking for help. Perhaps you can help me. Help? What kind of help were you looking for? I seem to have lost my memories, and doing so, I've lost myself. You've been stricken with amnesia. Fall from grace looks pained. How terrible! Do you have any idea how it happened? Not really. At least not that I can remember. I woke up on a slab on the mortuary, and everything before that is black. You woke in the mortuary? I think the, mis the dustman mistook me for being dead, or I was dead, or something. All I know is that I regenerate wounds quickly. I could be immortal, but I don't even know that for sure. Wow, I am so loose-lipped of you. Normally I don't give away all my secrets, or... You just make me talk, Fall from Grace. Fall from Grace seems to be appraising you with renewed interest. Those scars on your body. She reaches out a hand as if to touch you. May I? Um. Sure. Paul from Grace drags her fingers across your chest lightly, tracing the edges of your scars and following the curves where they blend into some of your tattoos. She seems fascinated. Ah, the tats get the girl again. Hmm, perhaps that's why I don't have a girlfriend. Ah, no. <laughs> These scars do look as if they would have taken several lifetimes to accumulate. They certainly do, though some are more recent. Fall from Grace steps back. Some of these wounds would have been fatal to a normal man. She taps her chin, thinking, what do you intend to do now? Well, I need to get my memories back, and my life back as far as I have a life between all these different incarnations. I intend to scour the plains and search inside myself until I can piece together who I am, what brought me to this state? Surely an answer sins it would like, eh, hey, watch us! Fall from Grace is still thinking, her fingers tapping on her chin. I must say, I've never met a man who had lost himself in the literal sense. She raised an eyebrow. Forgive me, but your condition is intriguing. Intriguing? Hmm. It is a... Some point, I can imagine. Fall from Grace nods. If it will help, you are welcome to tour the brothel. Several of our students are well versed in the verbal arts. Perhaps some of them will be able to rekindle your memories? I may do that, but Updated I want my to journal. ask one more question. Wouldn't you like to join with me on my travels? For some reason I feel, Fall from Grace, that you might be interested to scour the plains with me, with an amnesiac immortal. And something just draws me to you. To talk. And perhaps with talking, my memories will stir. And I do mean that. After all, uh, I think otherwise Anna's gonna stab me incredibly hard in the back. Anna stiffens and starts muttering under her breath. Who's to say she'll be coming with us? We don't need the likes of her, so we don't. Bar that, fingling! Mort clicks his teeth together. I'm all for the succubus coming with us. A power to know you're about as fun as passing a culture through your bowels. You best last, you bombax skull. What are the rattle on you so hard and double picking your teeth out of spire? Travel with you. Fall from Grace smiles slightly. He seems to be ignoring your companions. That's rather forward of you. Your sensate. Surely there must be a limit to how, how much you can learn right here. I think that you. I think you would be surprised. If you want me to accompany you on your travels, I need far more compelling reason than that. You mean you wouldn't be interested in traveling. Oh, here, there we go. With an immortal amnesiac who is searching to the plains for himself? 
Oh, I would be extremely interested to small slavery. Such a suggestion is intriguing. Make no mistake about that. Then you would like to travel with me, then? If you wish me to, then there is something you must do for me. There are ten students in this establishment. I would like you to speak to all of them. Then return to me with your thoughts. Then we shall see if we shall travel together or not. I will go speak to them, then. I will turn when I have spoken to all of them. Updated my journal. Now, as you may understand, because this is the brothel of slaying intellectual lust, a lot of dialogue is going to happen here. A lot of dialogue. Right. Done. Now, Done. first of all, of course, uh, why don't you go wander around beta for a bit, you scumbling right. arse? Oh, that sounds like something Mort wants to talk to. Did I ask you to come in here, you clueless sound? Take off! I've never seen something so disgusting. Yeah, this is definitely somebody Mord wants to talk to. But of course, whenever we meet one of our NPCs, Fall from Grace. Fall from Grace is a succubus, one of the Tanari. And this is a, a subdivision between the demons. You have demons, and in uh, Planescape, there are several types of demons. Some demons are just demons that hunt demons for snacks, but they're also races so to speak, even if you could do it that way, because trust me, the Tatanari being demons of the all, they are still a thousand different kinds, so to speak, with some more prevalent than others, like for instance, Succubus, and yes, I know nowadays in D&D, because all the devils have to be human looking, the, Tanari, the Succubus gets switched around or whatever, you know, but I think that is wrong, because I definitely think that seducing a man through passion is chaotic evil and not lawful evil, but whatever. Or at least it leans more to chaotic evil, let me put it that way. Um, but the succubus here, yes, it's the only human type of looking demon, and in their chaos something should be looking all of a sudden normal. Like, why is, I don't know why humans would be normal in a world where everyone looks weird, I think everybody just looks weird, but uh, yes. This is a demon, and one of the subtle races, the do and currently the dominant. I said race constantly, but I probably should say group. That's that's probably a better... Uh, or, in biology, it would be the family of creatures. Let's continue. A creature literally formed of raw chaos and evil. Her body and mind are the perfect template to tempt a man of any species, any age. She is the proprietor's proprietors, sorry, of the brothel of slaking intellectual lusts. Well, let's talk to this lady, Kimusksi, at her tongue. The wild-looking tiefling girl meets your gaze with an angry scowl. Her tattooed body is practically naked, covered by only a narrow leather thong. I thought this one was the brothel of intellectual lusts. <coughs> A black clove brazier and armored shoulder pads. Oh, well, at least a little bit more, but still. That description. Wait a second. That sounds awfully like... No, not the whip! Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm having today. A little bit of a weird episode. Hope you like it. <laughs> it appeared to serve more as decoration rather than actual protection. Her spiked hair, as well as the thin fur that covers her golden-like legs, is brazy white. The newer silver rings dangle from her ears, nostrils, lips, and brows. She wears a leather collar around her throat with the inscription, Kimusksi, at her tongue. Greetings. Kimusksi bears her teeth at you. And just what are you looking at, you banged up sod? My friend thought you were attractive, but whoo, was he horribly mistaken? She sneers at more than looks below him, where a body would normally be. Sharp tongue for a stemless debtor. You know what? Let them keep at it. Like I'd let them mine anywhere near if I had one. What? Did you hear the word brothel and think you could make some jink here, you flea bitten gutter whore? Ha! I can't believe they even let you in at all. What with all those sticks and sticks hopping off your shaggy legs? Ooh! One zero for more question mark? Dicks. The only annoying insect around here is you. She suddenly turns to you. Hey, you here to talk to me or what? Or what? What else can I do with you? What did you have in mind, your sodding jawbox? Go ahead, give me a reason to say no to you. 
Well, what do you usually do for patronism? I'm a practitioner of abuse. And what's that mean? I'll show you. Your hand lashes out to slap your face, but you manage to barely dodge the blow. Coxie pouts visibly and scowls. Oh well. I'm surprised I had enough um, dexterity for that, but say, can you teach Mort here to be more abusive? Because, uh. Oh, you seem to be good at it. She raised her eyebrow. Now, that's an unusual request. I don't know. It seems pretty foul mouthed already. Heh, <laughs> that's. Um, he seems pretty foul mouthed. Kamaxi Bladderdung. You scruffy goat gems, ho. You wish you had legs like mine, you pitiful wretch of a bone box. I can walk, run, dance. What do you do? Bob around wishing you had a pair of mm, goats or otherwise. The two of them lay into one another, exchanging barbed, blistering insults and clashing with razor edged tongues. Wait for it to end. At least in the at last the two stop the bickering and eerie silence settles over them as they eye one another hatefully. Finally the tiefling makes a grunting admission to Maud. They're not bad really. Not bad at all. Better than you, perhaps? Maud waggles his eyebrow at her. Eh, eh? Eyebrows. A wall skeleton with eyebrows. Kim Maxi narrows her eyes at Maud. Don't push it, skull. I think she's been listening to Anna. New taunts, alright. Alright, I won't, tiefling. I will admit I have learned a thing or two, though. Good thinking, chief. Sure thing, Maud. Kimaxi turns to you. So, was that all you wanted? I'm not spending any more time near you than I have to. Well, that's it for now then. Farewell. Pike off then. Alright, I'm gone. And uh, I am closing these doors on okay. purpose. Some of these uh, ladies, well, they uh, want yeah, you to open the door. Again, you clueless dung sack. Yes, mistress. Okay, that's. Oh! And okay. she actually strikes him. It sounds more or less like she is clearly a type of harlot of the flesh, but on one more of the BDSM kind. But uh, yeah, if you don't close the door, some of them walk out, and it can be right. really hard to find them again. Done. Oh, there's nobody here. Mm, is this then? All right. It must be the Lord. Hello. I don't trust the gif. All right. I say we leave him behind. Can't close that door. All right then. Ooh. I like what I see, Good yes, stuff. I remember you. Why, why can't Good I close stuff. this door? Oh well. There's something you can help you with, yes indeed. This alarmingly voluptuous woman, okay, has a thick mane of wavy raven colored hair, bluish skin and shimmering crimson eyes, like ruish which have fires lit behind them. Though she's not beautiful in the typical sense of the word, her features are exotic, not altogether unattractive. Yeah, that thick mane of way he raven called her. Hmm, the plains of weird creatures for sure. The woman's voice is deep and sensuous. And my greetings to you, sir. Her burning eyes roam over you. I am Kasai, said he is. So tell me, what might I do for you, hmm? I am so totally going to forget her accent the next time we talk to her. Anything, Mort cries. Do anything you want to me. Oh, come on, Mort. Please, you're embarrassing me here. Kasai laughs heartily, revealing canines long enough to be considered fangs. Whoa, what are you? Vampire werewolf combo with a mane and hey. that type of skin color? Well, then again, I don't think vampires are blue. Huh. Huh. She shakes her hand and smiles at Maud. Truly, though, please. What can I do for you? Well, what do you usually do for patrons? Talk, of course. Usually about dreams. Often those erotic in nature. But not always. Kasai winks at you, smiling. So, would you like to tell me yours? Don't be shy. I've heard everything, you know. Nothing will shock or surprise me. And I so love to hear people's dreams. We can trade if you like to. But you must go for it. Oh. I don't have dreams, actually. Kasai arcs her, her eyebrows in surprise. Truly? How sad. Even fiends and devas dream, you know. Are you certain you don't? Quite certain. No dreams at all. <laughs> Too peculiar. I'm at loss what to say. Uh, well, 
I have a question for you, Nagarlas. Because I have links or crimson eyes at you, awaiting your question. What are you? Kasai shakes her head. What can't you tell? She draws herself up, thrusting her ample bosom towards you. Oh, woman! She raises an eyebrow. I can see my answer doesn't please you. I am plain touched, actually. Like your friend here. Kasai indicates Anna. That's all you need to know. Well, that's all I wish to know, for Will. Done. Well, you're totally different, different type of team. That is clear. All right. Wow. All right. So let's go to this lady. Who's here in the dark? Marissa. Squinting at the figure behind the partition, you can barely make out a shapely female form in the darkness. She turns to you, but you can see nothing of her face. Greetings. The figure answers in a voice that is slow and deadly, like a steel dagger drawn across stone. Yes? Come to speak with Marissa, have you? Quite rude of you to enter a darkened room, storing behind the partition like so. Rude and foolhardy. You can hear a faint whispering sound like a slight breeze or the hissing of serpents. Maud whispers quietly. Whoa, creepy chit. My apologies, lady. I wasn't sure if someone was here. The woman gives you a slight hump. But if you. But it would seem there is someone in this room, wouldn't it? Shall you be on your way then? Not just yet. I had some questions if I may. Ask, why do you remain behind the screen? Is it your wish that I step away from this partition into some patch of light and speak to you face to face? Marissa laughs and there is a sound of scaling, skills sliding on skills. They are fig nut. The darkness suits me and doubtlessly suits you as well. Why is it so dark in here then? To prevent any unwanted and embarrassing casualties. Now, what is that you want? Well, I want to know why you cannot come into the light. I know that's not what stands there, but that's what I would want to ask. Nay, and the addition of please will not serve you to persuade me. Now, what do you want? I'm sure you, you did not want to come all the way to see me. Well, in that case, fall well, but uh, you do seem Done. rather odd about the way you are acting. Done. Well, let's go into this room and make that the last one for this episode. Oh, no, right. I mean the next one without with somebody in there to Forced talk to. Uh, Smashed it and a half. I'm gone. Forced it, done. All right then. As we uh, steal a little bit from right. the brothel, but uh, we don't really mind. Um, actually, I want that handkerchief. We haven't seen it before I'm yet, gone. and that of course means we will apply the golden rule. Subject mannerism reversed. Subject was talking to someone. Subject signed it. Subject, yeah. Modrans! Don't worry, we will talk to them soon, but not now. Last one for this episode. Echo. The striking young woman has skin the color of burn... Um, Burnished copper, a translucent white dress held precariously by golden clasps. It's draped carefully over a shapely form. Oh, oh freaking darn damn it, this is the worst brothel in the world! We want, we will accept that we're here for intellectual slating lusts, uh, you know, to speak. But why do all the women have to look this good? Darn it, man, you're... Don't you know it's hard for a man to talk when his brain and his, you know, that... Just doesn't mix very well all the time. Trust me, you start you see a beautiful girl that you like, you start babbling like a fool. Oh well, a lot of men do. But you know what I mean. Come on. Greens. The woman nods and smiles briefly. The scent of her hair sweetly perfumed fills your nostrils. I had some questions. She nods. Who are you? She smiles and curtsies, but offers no response. Can you speak? She shakes her head and smiles sadly at you. my journal. I love this shit already. Oh, come on, Mort. That is just cruel. Not all women talking your head off. Heck, in this case, I am talking the head off of my watchers. But then again, they can choose for it to watch or watch not. By the way, can you ride then, or pantomime? She pauses, shaking her head. And then for a while then. Well, and with that... I have to end the episode because it is 
well at the time. But come back in the next episode and we will finish up um, oh, talking to all the ladies in waiting. That's not the right word I should use. For the uh, sensates to be. I say I thank you for watching and remember great peril news, great beauty.